He Rape of the Lock, by Alexander Pope, Questions and Answers. What is the main theme of, The Rape of the Lock? Answer, the central theme of, The Rape of the Lock, is the triviality and vanity of high society. Pope uses the mock heroic style to satirize the superficial concerns of the 18th century English aristocracy, especially focusing on a minor scandal involving a stolen lock of hair. The poem exaggerates this incident to the level of epic significance, highlighting the ridiculousness of their preoccupation with such trivial matters. How does Alexander Pope use satire in The Rape of the Lock? Answer. Pope employs satire by transforming a minor social squabble into a grand epic, complete with gods, goddesses, and heroic battles. The poem parodies classical epic conventions, using them to mock the superficial concerns of the aristocracy. For instance, the theft of a lock of hair is presented with the same gravity and grandeur as a heroic quest or war, thus ridiculing the inflated importance placed on such trivial matters. Who are the main characters in the poem, and what roles do they play? Answer. The primary characters in, The Rape of the Lock, are Belinda, the heroine of the poem, whose lock of hair is stolen. She represents the vain and fashionable upper-class woman. The Baron, the antagonist who steals Belinda's lock. He embodies the male opportunism and folly. Sylphs, supernatural beings who protect Belinda's beauty and virtue. They add a mystical and humorous element to the poem. Umbriel, a gnome who causes mischief and exacerbates the conflict by bringing a bag of sighs, tears, and sorrows. What is the significance of the sylphs in the poem? Answer. The sylphs symbolize the delicate and superficial nature of the upper class, as well as the idealized notion of beauty and virtue. They are depicted as protectors of Belinda's beauty but are ultimately powerless to prevent the theft of the lock. Their presence adds a layer of irony, as their efforts to safeguard such a trivial object underscore the futility of their role in the grand scheme of things. How does Popusipic conventions to enhance the satire in the poem? Answer. Pope employs traditional epic conventions, such as invoking the muse, divine intervention, and heroic battles, to heighten the comic effect. By using these conventions to narrate a minor social event, he underscores the absurdity of treating such trivial matters with epic seriousness. For example, the mock epic battle over the lock of hair, complete with a council of gods, satirizes the grandiose nature of epic poetry and the exaggerated importance of the societal conflict. What role does the rape of the lock play in the poem? Answer. The term rape in the title is used ironically to suggest a serious crime while referring to the theft of a lock of hair. This exaggeration highlights the trivial nature of the actual event and mocks the melodramatic responses of the characters involved. The use of the word emphasizes the disparity between the seriousness of the crime and the exaggerated reactions it provokes, reinforcing the satirical tone of the poem. How does, the rape of the lock, reflect the social attitudes of the 18th century? Answer. The poem reflects 18th century social attitudes by critiquing the vanity, materialism, and superficiality of the aristocracy. Pope's satirical portrayal of the character's preoccupations with appearance, social status, and trivial disputes reveals the frivolous nature of high society. By exaggerating these traits and mocking their concerns, Pope offers a commentary on the emptiness of aristocratic value and the misplaced importance placed on social status and appearances. What is the structure of The Rape of the Lock, and how does it contribute to the poem's effect? Answer. The Rape of the Lock is structured as a mock epic, consisting of five cantos written in heroic couplets. The use of this structure, which traditionally conveys grand heroic tales, contrasts sharply with the trivial subject matter of the poem. This juxtaposition enhances the satire by elevating a minor social scandal to epic proportions, thus highlighting the absurdity of the aristocracy's concerns and emphasizing the poem's satirical intent. How does Pope's use of the mock epic form in The Rape of the Lock Challenge the conventions of epic poetry and what effect does this have on the reader's perception of both the poem and the society it satirizes? Answer. Pope's mock epic form challenges traditional epic poetry by using grandiose language and heroic conventions to narrate a trivial event. This juxtaposition of serious style with a minor subject matter creates a humorous and critical perspective on the frivolity of high society. The effect on the reader is a heightened awareness of the absurdity and pretentiousness of the aristocracy's concerns, as well as a critique of the inflated self-importance often associated with epic narratives. In what ways does The Rape of the Lock reflect the gender dynamics of its time, and how does Pope use these dynamics to satirize social norms? Answer. 
The Rape of the Lock reflects 18th century gender dynamics by portraying women as obsessed with their appearance and men as opportunistic and manipulative. Pope satirizes these dynamics by exaggerating the importance of Belinda's hair and the lengths to which the male characters go to steal it. Through this satire, Pope critiques the societal expectations placed on women to maintain their beauty and the trivial pursuits that often dominate gender relations in high society. Society. How does Pope's portrayal of the supernatural elements, such as the sylphs and gnomes, contribute to the satirical tone of the rape of the lock? Answer. Pope's portrayal of supernatural elements like the sylphs and gnomes adds a layer of absurdity and whimsy to the poem. By elevating these supernatural beings to protect and influence the trivial matter of a stolen lock of hair, Pope underscores the ridiculousness of the high society's concerns. The supernatural elements serve as a satirical device to mock the seriousness with which the characters treat their minor social conflicts, enhancing the overall satirical tone of the poem. What role does irony play in, the rape of the lock, and how does Pope employ it to underscore the poem's satirical message? Answer. Irony is central to, the rape of the lock, as Pope uses it to highlight the contrast between the poem's grandiose style and its trivial subject matter. The irony is evident in the way serious epic conventions are applied to a minor social incident, creating a humorous effect. This irony underscores the poem's satirical message by exposing the pretentiousness and superficiality of the society being critiqued, thereby emphasizing the disconnect between appearance and reality. How does Pope's use of characterization in The Rape of the Lock contribute to the poem's critique of social hierarchies and manners? Answer. Pope's characterization in The Rape of the Lock serves to critique social hierarchies and manners by presenting exaggerated and often ridiculous portraits of the aristocracy. Characters like Belinda and the Baron are depicted with exaggerated traits that highlight their vanity and self-importance. Through these characters, Pope critiques the superficial social structures and manners of the time, revealing the emptiness and absurdity of their behaviors and values. In what ways does The Rape of the Lock use symbolism to enhance its satirical critique, and what is the significance of specific symbols within the poem? Answer. The Rape of the Lock uses symbolism to enhance its satirical critique by imbuing ordinary objects and events with grandiose significance. For example, the lock of hair itself becomes a symbol of vanity and superficiality, while the sylphs symbolize the fragility of beauty and social status. These symbols serve to amplify the satire by demonstrating how trivial concerns are treated with undue importance, thus critiquing the values and priorities of the society being satirized. How does the narrative voice and tone in, The Rape of the Lock, influence the reader's interpretation of the poem's themes and characters? Answer. The narrative voice and tone in, The Rape of the Lock, are characterized by a witty and ironic style that influences the reader's interpretation by framing the characters and themes in a humorous light. Pope's tone, which combines mock seriousness with playful satire, guides the reader to view the characters and their concerns with skepticism. This approach shapes the reader's understanding of the poem's themes by emphasizing the absurdity of the high society's preoccupations and reinforcing the satirical message. What is the impact of Pope's poetic technique on the portrayal of societal norms and values in The Rape of the Lock, and how does it reflect the cultural context of 18th century England? Answer. Pope's poetic technique, including his use of heroic couplets and mock epic conventions, impacts the portrayal of societal norms and values by presenting them in an exaggerated and critical manner. This technique reflects the cultural context of 18th century England by highlighting the superficiality and materialism of the aristocracy. The poem's style and structure mirror the class distinctions and social attitudes of the time, offering a critique of the cultural preoccupations and values prevalent in English high society. Discuss how Alexander Pope employs the mock epic genre in The Rape of the Lock to satirize the societal norms and values of 18th century England. How does this approach enhance the poem's critique of the aristocracy? Answer. To address this question, analyze Pope's use of epic conventions such as invocation of the muse, grand battles, and supernatural elements, and how they are applied to a trivial event, the theft of a lock of hair. Discuss how this mock epic approach contrasts with the ordinary nature of the plot, thereby highlighting the absurdity of the aristocratic concerns. Explore how the exaggeration of the minor incident into an epic narrative serves to critique the vanity and superficiality of the upper class. 
Additionally, consider the effectiveness of this technique in reinforcing the poem's satirical message and its impact on the reader's perception of societal norms. Examine the role of gender in The Rape of the Lock. How does Pope use the poem to reflect and critique the gender dynamics of his time? Answer. Analyze how gender roles and expectations are portrayed in the poem, focusing on characters like Belinda and the Baron. Discuss how Belinda's preoccupation with her appearance and the male character's actions reflect societal views on gender and femininity. Consider how Pope satirizes these views by exaggerating the significance of the lock of hair and the reactions of both male and female characters. Evaluate how the poem critiques the expectations placed on women and the power dynamics between genders in 18th century English society. Evaluate the use of irony in The Rape of the Lock. How does Pope's use of irony contribute to the overall satire of the poem? Provide specific examples from the text to support your answer. Answer. To answer this question, identify instances of irony throughout the poem, such as the contrast between the epic style and the trivial subject matter, or the serious treatment of the theft of the lock. Discuss how these ironic elements serve to highlight the ridiculousness of the character's concerns and the societal values being critiqued. Explore how irony is employed to create humor and to underscore the satire, and provide textual examples to illustrate these points. Analyze the symbolism of the sylphs and the gnomes in The Rape of the Lock. How do these supernatural elements contribute to the poem's satirical portrayal of aristocratic society? Answer. Discuss the symbolic roles of the sylphs and gnomes in the poem, focusing on their representation of beauty, vanity, and mischief. Explore how the sylphs' attempts to protect Belinda's hair and the gnomes' role in exacerbating the conflict reflect the superficiality and triviality of the aristocratic concerns. Analyze how these supernatural elements enhance the satire by emphasizing the absurdity of the characters' preoccupations and the futility of their efforts to maintain social status and beauty. Use examples from the poem to support your analysis. How does Pope's use of narrative voice and tone in The Rape of the Lock shape the reader's understanding of the poem's themes and characters? Discuss how the tone contributes to the poem's satirical impact. Answer. Examine how Pope's narrative voice and tone, characterized by wit, irony, and mock seriousness, affect the reader's interpretation of the characters and themes. Discuss how the playful and critical tone influences the portrayal of the characters, such as Belinda and the Baron, and their concerns. Analyze how the tone contributes to the satirical effect of the poem by framing the triviality of the conflict in a grandiose manner. Provide specific examples from the text to illustrate how the narrative voice and tone shape the reader's understanding of the poem's satire. Discuss Alexander Pope's use of the mock epic genre in The Rape of the Lock. How does this literary form serve as a vehicle for satire, and what does it reveal about 18th century English society? Answer. Alexander Pope's The Rape of the Lock is a quintessential example of that. Mock epic genre, a literary form that parodies the grandiose style of epic poetry by applying it to trivial subjects. In this poem, Pope adopts the conventions of epic poetry, such as the invocation of the muse, divine intervention, and grand battles, but uses them to narrate the petty theft of a lock of hair from a fashionable young woman named Belinda. Pope's mock epic approach highlights the absurdity of the high society's preoccupations by inflating the significance of a minor social squabble to epic proportions. For instance, the opening invocation, typically reserved for serious subjects, is employed to introduce the trivial conflict over a lock of hair. The use of heroic couplets and epic machinery, including the sylphs who protect Belinda and the gnomes who cause mischief, further exaggerates the importance of the theft. The satire inherent in this mock epic form serves multiple purposes. Firstly, it critiques the superficiality and vanity of the 18th century aristocracy. By portraying a mundane social event with the same seriousness as a classical epic, Pope exposes the frivolous nature of the aristocratic concerns about appearance and social status. Secondly, the grandiose treatment of the trivial subject matter underscores the disconnection between the societal values of the time and the actual importance of the issues being debated. Pope's choice to mock the epic genre reflects a broader critique of contemporary social norms, suggesting that the preoccupations of the aristocracy were as inflated and absurd as the grandiose narratives of epic literature. This approach not only provides humor but also delivers a sharp critique of the vanity and pretension of 18th-century English society. 2. Analyze how gender dynamics are portrayed in The Rape of the Lock. How does Pope use the poem to reflect and critique the roles and expectations of men and women in 18th-century society? Answer. 
In The Rape of the Lock, Alexander Pope examines and critiques the gender dynamics of 18th century society through the exaggerated portrayal of its characters and their interactions. The poem highlights the roles and expectations placed on men and women, particularly focusing on the themes of vanity, manipulation, and power. Belinda, the central female character, epitomizes the ideal of beauty and social grace prevalent among upper-class women. Her primary concern with maintaining her appearance and social status reflects the societal expectation for women to prioritize their looks and social reputation. Pope exaggerates her preoccupation with her hair, elevating it to the level of a prized possession that merits divine protection. This portrayal satirizes the extent to which women were expected to value their physical appearance as a crucial aspect of their identity. Conversely, the male characters in the poem, especially the Baron, are depicted as opportunistic and manipulative. The Baron's theft of Belinda's lock symbolizes male dominance and the trivialization of women's concerns. His actions highlight the male prerogative to interfere with and diminish the value of women's attributes for personal gain. The Baron's behavior, driven by a desire to assert control and gain favor, reflects the gender dynamics that allow men to exploit and belittle women. Pope's use of supernatural beings, such as the sylphs and gnomes, further critiques these gender roles. The sylphs, futile efforts to protect Belinda and the gnomes' disruptive influence emphasize the helplessness of women in the face of male machinations. This portrayal underscores the power imbalances and the superficial nature of societal expectations for both genders. Through satire, Pope critiques these gender dynamics by exposing their absurdities and inconsistencies. The exaggerated importance placed on Belinda's hair and the triviality of the Baron's theft serve as a commentary on the broader societal attitudes toward gender and the superficial roles imposed on men and women. 3. Examine the significance of symbolism in The Rape of the Lock. How do the symbols used by Pope enhance the poem's satirical message, and what do they reveal about the values and concerns of the society he is critiquing? Answer. Symbolism in The Rape of the Lock plays a crucial role in enhancing the satirical message of the poem and providing insight into the values and concerns of 18th century society. Pope employs various symbols to amplify the triviality and absurdity of the social preoccupations he is critiquing. One of the central symbols in the poem is the lock of hair itself. This seemingly insignificant object is elevated to a symbol of beauty, vanity, and social status. The theft of the lock becomes a major incident, representing the way in which superficial concerns are magnified and given undue importance in aristocratic society. By focusing on such a trivial object, Pope underscores the extent to which societal values are misplaced and superficial. The sylphs, supernatural beings who protect Belinda's beauty, are another significant symbol. They represent the idealization of beauty and the fragility of social status. Their efforts to safeguard the lock and their subsequent failure highlight the absurdity of placing such importance on physical appearance. The sylphs' inability to prevent the theft symbolizes the ultimate futility of relying on superficial attributes for maintaining social standing. The gnomes, led by Umbriel, also play a symbolic role. They represent mischief and malevolence, exacerbating the conflict by introducing a bag of sighs, tears, and sorrows. This symbolizes the emotional turmoil and pettiness that arise from minor social conflicts. The gnomes' interference emphasizes how small grievances are often inflated into significant issues, reflecting the irrationality and excessive sensitivity prevalent in the society Pope is satirizing. Overall, the use of symbolism in The Rape of the Lock serves to critique the values and concerns of the 18th century aristocracy. By imbuing ordinary objects and characters with exaggerated significance, Pope exposes the absurdity of the social norms and highlights the disconnect between genuine importance and the trivial matters that preoccupy high society. Dot, evaluate the impact of Pope's use of narrative voice and tone in The Rape of the Lock on the reader's understanding of the poem's satirical elements. How do these stylistic choices shape the reader's perception of the characters and their concerns? Answer. Alexander Pope's use of narrative voice and tone in The Rape of the Lock is pivotal in shaping the reader's understanding of the poem's satire. The narrative voice is characterized by wit, irony, and a mock seriousness that aligns with the poem's satirical objectives. Pope employs a detached and ironic narrative voice that often seems to observe the characters and their actions with a sense of bemusement. This perspective allows the reader to see the characters' actions and concerns as absurd and exaggerated. For instance, the elaborate descriptions of Belinda's beauty and the theft of her lock are presented with a gravity that contrasts sharply with their actual significance, enhancing the satirical effect. 
The tone oscillates between mock heroic and sardonic, amplifying the trivial nature of the conflict and highlighting the disconnect between the characters' concerns and their importance. The tone also plays a critical role in shaping the reader's perception of the characters. Belinda is depicted with a combination of admiration and irony, while her beauty is described in grandiose terms, her obsession with it is mocked. The Baron, on the other hand, is portrayed as a schemer whose actions are treated with exaggerated seriousness, further underscoring his frivolous motives. The contrast Between the poem's high-flown style and the mundane subject matter creates a sense of irony that encourages the reader to view the character's preoccupations as laughable and misguided. Pope's narrative tone and voice thus serve to distance the reader from the seriousness with which the characters approach their social conflict, reinforcing the poem's satirical critique of the superficial values and concerns of the aristocracy. 5. Analyze the role of the supernatural in The Rape of the Lock. How do the sylphs and other supernatural elements contribute to the poem's satirical exploration of social values and personal vanity? Answer. In The Rape of the Lock, Alexander Pope uses supernatural elements, particularly the sylphs and gnomes, to enhance the poem's satire of social values and personal vanity. These supernatural beings play crucial roles in amplifying the triviality of the social conflict and highlighting the absurdity of the character's concerns. The sylphs, ethereal protectors of beauty and virtue, are central to the poem's satire. They are depicted as delicate creatures whose primary duty is to guard Belinda's physical appearance. Their elaborate and futile efforts to protect Belinda's lock of hair, which is ultimately stolen, symbolize the superficial nature of societal preoccupations with beauty and status. The sylphs' involvement underscores the extent to which appearance and social standing are elevated to an almost sacred status, despite their inherent triviality. This supernatural protection, contrasted with the actual significance of the lock, amplifies the satirical critique of how seriously such concerns are taken. Similarly, the gnomes, led by Umbriel, represent the forces of mischief and envy. Their role in the poem involves stirring up trouble and exacerbating the conflict by introducing a bag of sighs, tears, and sorrows. This supernatural interference symbolizes the emotional and psychological turmoil that often accompanies minor social disputes. The gnomes, actions reflect the way small grievances are inflated into major issues by the characters, further emphasizing the absurdity of their concerns. The use of these supernatural elements in The Rape of the Lock not only adds a layer of whimsy and fantasy but also serves to critique the exaggerated importance placed on personal vanity and social status. By depicting these concerns as being influenced by supernatural forces, Pope highlights the disconnect between the character's self-importance and the actual significance of their actions, thereby enhancing the satirical exploration of social values. 6. Explore how Pope uses epic conventions in The Rape of the Lock to create humor and satire. What effect do these conventions have on the reader's interpretation of the poem's subject matter? Answer. Alexander Pope's use of epic conventions in The Rape of the Lock is instrumental in creating humor and satire. By adopting the grandiose style and structural elements typical of epic poetry and applying them to a trivial social incident, Pope generates a satirical contrast that underscores the absurdity of the subject matter. Epic conventions such as the invocation of the muse, the epic battle, and the heroic journey are employed in the poem to magnify the significance of the theft of a lock of hair. The opening invocation, traditionally used to call upon divine inspiration for serious and grand narratives, is humorously applied to the minor event of the lock's theft. This incongruity sets the tone for the entire poem, emphasizing the exaggerated importance of the conflict. Pope also incorporates epic battles and divine interventions, such as the conflict between the sylphs and gnomes, to portray the theft as a momentous event. These elements, typically associated with grand heroic struggles, are applied to a mundane social squabble, creating a comedic effect. The depiction of Belinda's reaction and the subsequent battle over the lock are presented with the same seriousness as epic warfare, highlighting the ridiculousness of the situation. The use of these epic conventions affects the reader's interpretation by framing the trivial events of the poem within a grandiose narrative structure. This framing amplifies the contrast between the significance of the subject matter and the elaborate treatment it receives, reinforcing the satirical critique of the character's preoccupations and societal values. Overall, Pope's incorporation of epic conventions in The Rape of the Lock 
serves to create humor by juxtaposing the grand style with a trivial plot, thereby enhancing the poem's satirical exploration of the superficiality and vanity of 18th-century aristocratic society. 7. Assess how the structure and form of The Rape of the Lock contribute to its satirical impact. How do the poem's formal elements, such as its use of heroic couplets and stanza structure, enhance its critique of societal norms? Answer. The structure and form of The Rape of the Lock significantly contribute to its satirical impact. Pope's use of heroic couplets and specific stanza structures plays a crucial role in enhancing the poem's critique of societal norms. Heroic Couplets The poem is written in heroic couplets, a form consisting of rhymed pairs of iambic pentameter lines. This formal structure is traditionally associated with epic and heroic poetry, which lends a sense of grandeur and seriousness to the content. By employing this form to narrate a trivial social event, Pope creates a satirical contrast between the elevated style and the mundane subject matter. The formal elegance of the heroic couplets underscores the absurdity of treating such a minor incident with epic seriousness, thereby critiquing the superficiality and vanity of the aristocratic society. Stanza Structure The poem is divided into a series of cantos, each with a specific structure and rhythm that reflect the conventions of epic poetry. This structured approach enhances the satirical effect by mimicking the formal qualities of epic narratives while dealing with a trivial plot. The regularity and predictability of the stanza structure contrast with the chaotic and trivial nature of the social conflict, highlighting the incongruity between form and content. Formal elements. The use of formal elements such as elaborate descriptions, grand similes, and epic machinery e.g., the sylphs and gnomes further amplifies the satirical critique. These elements, typically used to elevate the importance of heroic deeds and divine interventions, are applied to the petty concerns of the aristocracy. This exaggerated treatment exposes the trivial nature of the characters' preoccupations and the societal values they represent. Overall, the structure and form of The Rape of the Lock enhance its satirical impact by juxtaposing the grandiose style of epic poetry with a trivial subject matter. This formal contrast reinforces Pope's critique of the superficiality and pretension of 18th-century high society, effectively highlighting the absurdity of their concerns and values. Discuss the use of irony in The Rape of the Lock and its contribution to the poem's satirical objectives. How does Pope's use of irony shape the reader's understanding of the characters and the social commentary embedded in the poem? Answer. Irony is a central tool in Alexander Pope's the Rape of the Lock, serving to heighten the poem's satirical critique of societal norms and personal vanity. Pope employs various forms of irony to underscore the absurdity of the character's actions and the superficial concerns of 18th-century high society. Situational Irony One of the most prominent forms of irony in the poem is situational irony. The grandiose treatment of a minor social incident, the theft of a lock of hair, contrasts sharply with its actual significance. This incongruity between the serious epic style and the trivial subject matter highlights the absurdity of elevating such a minor event to the level of epic. Importance. The elaborate descriptions of the theft and its aftermath serve to mock the inflated sense of importance that the characters attach to it. Dramatic irony. The poem also features dramatic irony, particularly in the way the characters are portrayed versus their actual concerns. For example, Belinda's obsession with her appearance and the Baron's scheming to steal the lock are presented with an exaggerated seriousness that contrasts with the trivial nature of their preoccupations. The reader is aware of the absurdity of the situation, while the characters remain oblivious, creating a humorous effect that critiques their vanity and superficiality. Verbal irony. Pope's use of verbal irony is evident in the exaggerated praise and mock serious tone with which he describes the characters and their actions. For instance, the elaborate language used to describe the lock of hair and the battle over it is laden with irony, as it elevates a trivial matter to epic proportions. This verbal irony serves to emphasize the ridiculousness of the characters' concerns and the superficial values of their society. Social commentary. The use of irony in The Rape of the Lock enhances the poem's social commentary by revealing the gap between the characters' perceptions and the actual triviality of their concerns. Through irony, Pope exposes the pretensions and absurdities of high society, offering a critique of its values and behaviors. The ironic portrayal of the theft and the characters' reactions underscores the poem's satirical message about the superficiality of aristocratic life. Overall, Pope's use of irony shapes the reader's understanding by highlighting the incongruity between the grand style of epic poetry and the trivial nature of the subject matter. This contrast reinforces the satirical.
critique of societal norms and personal vanity, effectively exposing the absurdity of the characters' preoccupations and the values they represent. 9. Analyze the portrayal of social class and its impact in The Rape of the Lock. How does Pope use the characters and their interactions to comment on the social hierarchy and class distinctions of his time? Answer. In The Rape of the Lock, Alexander Pope uses characters and their interactions to offer a satirical commentary on social class and class distinctions of 18th century England. The poem's portrayal of social class reveals the superficial nature of aristocratic concerns and the rigid class hierarchies that define the society. Aristocratic Vanity The central characters, Belinda and the Baron, embody the vanity and preoccupation with social status typical of the aristocracy. Belinda's obsession with her appearance and the Baron's theft of the lock of hair are depicted with exaggerated seriousness, highlighting the trivial concerns of the upper class. Pope's portrayal of these characters emphasizes their fixation on superficial attributes and the extent to which they allow social status to dictate their actions. Social hierarchies. The interactions between characters in the poem also reflect the rigid class distinctions of the time. The Baron's act of stealing the lock is an assertion of power and dominance, reflecting the male prerogative and the hierarchical nature of gender relations. The poem portrays the Baron's actions as a means of asserting his superiority and undermining Belinda's social standing. This dynamic underscores the class. Based power structures that influence social interactions and conflicts. Satirical commentary. Pope's use of the mock epic genre and supernatural elements further critiques the social hierarchy. The elaborate and grandiose treatment of a minor social dispute serves to highlight the absurdity of class distinctions and the inflated importance placed on social status. The poem's portrayal of the sylphs and gnomes also reflects the arbitrary nature of social concerns, as these supernatural beings are preoccupied with protecting and manipulating superficial attributes. Social Critique Through the exaggerated portrayal of social class and its concerns, Pope critiques the superficiality and pretension of the aristocracy. The focus on trivial matters and the grandiose treatment of social disputes serve to expose the absurdity of class distinctions and the values associated with them. By highlighting the disparity between the characters' preoccupations and the actual significance of their concerns, Pope offers a satirical commentary on the social hierarchy and class dynamics of his time. Overall, Pope's portrayal of social class in The Rape of the Lock reveals the superficial nature of aristocratic concerns and the rigid class distinctions that define the society. Through satire and exaggeration, the poem critiques the values and behaviors associated with social status, offering a commentary on the absurdities of class hierarchies and social norms. 10. Explore the theme of appearance versus reality in The Rape of the Lock. How does Pope use this theme to critique the superficial values and societal expectations of his time? Answer. The theme of appearance versus reality is central to the Rape of the Lock, and Alexander Pope uses it to critique the superficial values and societal expectations of 18th century England. The poem contrasts the external appearances of the characters with the underlying realities, revealing the discrepancies and absurdities inherent in societal norms. Superficial Appearances Pope emphasizes the preoccupation with appearance through the character of Belinda, whose primary concern is her physical beauty and social status. The elaborate descriptions of her beauty and the emphasis on the lock of hair as a symbol of her worth highlight the superficial values that dominate her world. Pope's portrayal of Belinda's vanity and the elaborate rituals she undergoes to maintain her appearance serve as a critique of the importance placed on physical attributes. Reality of Concerns The poem juxtaposes the grandiose portrayal of Belinda's beauty and the theft of her lock with the trivial nature of the actual event. The theft, while depicted with epic seriousness, is ultimately a minor incident that underscores the disparity between appearance and reality. This contrast highlights the absurdity of the character's concerns and the way societal values inflate the importance of superficial matters. Social satire. Pope uses the theme of appearance versus reality to satirize the societal expectations and behaviors of the time. The mock epic style, with its grandiose language and epic conventions, is applied to a trivial social dispute, emphasizing the disparity between the external presentation and the underlying reality. The exaggerated treatment of the theft and the reactions of the characters reflect the superficial nature of societal values and the tendency to prioritize appearance over substance. Critique of Vanity The theme of appearance versus reality also critiques the vanity and pretension of the aristocracy. The poem's depiction of the sylphs and gnomes, who are preoccupied with protecting and manipulating superficial attributes, further underscores the disconnect between appearance and reality. 
By focusing on these trivial concerns and exaggerating their significance, Pope exposes the absurdity of placing such importance on external appearances. Overall, the theme of appearance versus reality in The Rape of the Lock serves to critique the superficial values and societal expectations of 18th century England. Pope's use of satire and exaggeration highlights the disparity between external appearances and underlying realities, offering a commentary on the absurdity of societal norms and the importance placed on superficial matters.